Hi, and welcome to Carlos Cooks again. Um, today, I'm going to be making pilchard fish cakes. Now, this is a recipe that my mother and father taught me over 40 years ago, and I've been making it ever since. And it's a really, really delicious dish. Um, I'm going to share it with you. Um, we're going to make the fish cakes, but we're also going to accompany it with a parsley sauce. Um, now, fish cakes, to me, they fall into three categories. Um, you have category one, which is your, your white fish fish cakes that are very bland, not much flavour to them. Uh, and then category two, I would class haddock, smoked haddock or um, salmon fish cakes. A bit more flavour, a bit more colour to the fish. These I class as level three because they're um, from small shoal fish um, with a lot of flavour um, and they've, they've got a dis distinct taste. Um, the pilchard is obviously a member of the sort of herring sardine family and according to where you catch them in the uh, in, in the world um, they fall either into the sardine or the pilchard category. Sardine is usually the smaller shoal fish um, in the United Kingdom they over a certain length they class them as a pilchard and you usually find these in cans and the pilchards I'm going to be using today are canned in tomato sauce. Um, so what we're going to do first is we're going to clean the pilchards up slightly. Um, I've already boiled some potatoes and sliced them up. We're going to, they're just chilling in the fridge now. We're just going to mash those up slightly and we're not going to um, really make the potatoes smooth at all. We want some chunks in it and the same with the fish. We're not going to blend the fish in a lot. We're just going to add it in gently with a few herbs and spices, some lemon and then we're going to lightly fry them off and then make a parsley sauce to accompany them. So we're going to start with the pilchards. Now, as I say, they are in tomato sauce. What we're going to do is we're going to take the tomato sauce off. I didn't have a bowl to the side somewhere. Sorry. We're going to take the tomato sauce off, just pour it into a saucepan because we're going to use that. We're just going to warm that up slightly at the end after we've made the pasty sauce. And we're just going to drizzle a little bit on top. It goes very well because the tomato sauce has been flavoured with these pilchards while they've been in a can. It's got a lovely aroma to it. We'll just get rid of, of that. It is a bit of a messy job, I warn you, but it doesn't have to be. I'm very fussy. I don't like the pilchard bones, you know, the skeleton that's in between the fillet um, in the fish cakes. A lot of people do. My father used to add it. He, he didn't mind the crunch of it, but I'm, I'm not a great fan, so I clean them up slightly. I don't take the skin off. But if we just tip those out onto the board so you can see them, in this small can, we've got about three in here, I think. So all I'm going to do is just turn each fillet on its side and I'm just going to run a knife very gently into the middle and just pull it apart gently like that. And you can see it starts to expose the central bone now. Now this is the bit I'm not too keen on. It's a bit crunchy if you leave it in. Uh, some people like it because obviously there's a lot of calcium in the bone. But I just take that out. And there we go, as easy as that. I leave the skin on. The skin is, you know, the pilchards are cooked. You can see the skin breaks down very easily. There's a lot of nutrition in that. There's a lot of omega-3 in pilchards. So the skin doesn't come off, but I just take these central bones out. And they do come out very easily. They should lift out with a knife. And then you're just left with the pilchard flesh. We're not worried about a little bit of tomato sauce, but we obviously don't want too much in the fish cake, otherwise they're going to fall apart when we're cooking them. There's the last one. As long as you're gently, that central bone, sorry, gentle, that central bone will come out quite easily and it will take the smaller bones with it. And that's it, that's our pilchard already so we'll just leave that there for a minute. Wash the hands. Keep 
that sauce for later. Just turn on the pan, it can start warming up. So what we're going to do now, just put that to one side. And in the fridge I've got the potatoes cooling down. So you can see I just took two sort of medium sized potatoes, I've um, cut them in half and then cut them in three again and boiled them till they just fall off the off the fork, off the knife or other, just like that, not overcooked at all. And we're just gently going to break those up with a fork, mash them through a little bit. Now I've obviously not had much time to leave these to cool since I've boiled them, but they do benefit from being left to cool thoroughly, mashed like this and then kept in the refrigerator for an hour before you make the fish cakes. Just spinning the bowl round and just forking the potato to get the, the bigger lumps out. Of course, if you are a sardine lover, or any tin smaller fish, you could use that instead. Very similar flavour. You don't have to use the tomato sauce canned variety, you can use the uh, plain variety if you're not too keen on that. And there is also a spicier version that has chilli in, but if you like that you can always add that yourself anyway. So I've used some very starchy potatoes here, they're the, they're the best ones for, for fish cakes. And that's looking good, I think they're nearly there. We're not going to add any liquids in, because uh, you want to be able to form really nice fish cakes with this. So back to our pilchards. I'm just going to break these in half. Another bone there. Just break them in half gently like that. We do, we want some chunky chunky pieces in the in the fish cake. We don't want it all mushed in. Apologies for that. So we've got pilchards on top of our mashed potato there. And what we're going to do next is we're going to add some spring onion. That's not really nice. We've just got three spring onions here, and we're just going to very thinly slice them. Some of the greenery as well. Just clean them up a little. I've already taken a layer of the outer skin off, so it should be alright. So just very thinly. We want them to cook while the fish cakes are cooking, so we don't want too big a chunks because they'll still be hard. So we'll just add that to our mixture. Some chopped parsley, stalks and all, so we we'll just Juice of half a lemon. Let's go add a 
lovely flavour to the fish and potato. Just make sure that it keeps in there. Got to help bind everything together, a small egg. And then some seasoning. Pink rock salt. Some ground black pepper. As you can tell, I like lots of pepper in there. Okay, so now we need a with a spoon. We're just going to mix all that together gently. We're not going to uh, mush it up too much. We just want to blend the ingredients. Try and get equal amounts of fish and spring onion in amongst the potato, and obviously get the egg mixed in a little as well. So it doesn't need much at all. So it should look like that at this point. And what we're going to do is get some plain flour. A little bit of plain flour into a bowl. So we're just going to coat the outsides of them slightly with that before we fry them. Okay. No spin required. Hob on. This is a brand new induction hob, so I'm still getting used to it, so bear with me. It's, uh, it's more ideal to use for you know, presenting purposes because my gas hob is behind me and it would have been difficult to get camera shots of what was cooking. So uh, this should be a lot better, you should be able to see what I'm doing. I will put a camera on the frying pan so you can see what's going on. So the bottom in there. Let's change the camera. going on a bit better now. So now it's a messy part again. We're going to get clumps of this out. We're just going to coat it in flour and then uh, fry it in the pan here. Quite slowly. We don't want to get too much colour. Just wait for the butter to melt. Turn it up a little bit. this induction hob as soon as you lift the pan off of it it beeps to tell you that nothing's there for it to heat up. Right, let's 
starting to sizzle a bit. So I'm just going to use a large spoon here to get a portion of the uh, fish cake which is very moist, very wet to work with but very light hands on it and just shape it, it can be quite thick, it's probably about an inch thick and then into the pan. Morning, they're going to smell very nice. You're not going to be able to wait until you've cooked the parsley sauce to eat them. But the parsley sauce is an essential part. The flavour of the fish, the smoky flavour of the fish, comes through the cuts through the cream of the parsley sauce. Lovely. Mm. It's going to be lovely and moist. Just dust off any excess flour. So a small, a small um, tin of poachers and the two potatoes I've done are going to create sort of four fairly nice sized fish cakes. And two of them is a meal in, its, in itself. You won't need anything else with it. You won't need any vegetables. They're very filling. Just the parsley sauce and a little drizzle of the red sauce out of the can. And they're going to be beautiful. So just wash my hands a bit. shape make sure they're not sticking but don't get tempted to turn them over at all just let them cook through we just want to get a bit of colour a bit of crispness on the bottom and then we're gently going to turn them over and put them in a little bit more then we're going to put them to one side and make the parsley sauce which is very quick to make well parsley sauce I make using a simple roux, so that's a mixture of some melted butter and some flour as a thickening agent and then to that I add milk. I'm going to be using a sort of full cream, lactose cream milk, um, but any milk, whatever you want, you'll even do it with semi skins and then we're going to um, just stir that over a low heat um, until the, the roux, the butter and the flour mixture melts into the milk and the milk comes up to a suitable temperature. Once that's happened, I'm going to add some chopped parsley into it so it can cook in the parsley sauce. Um, we'll just let that reduce and thicken up slightly. And it should be, should be great to go on top of these. And you can use that same roux uh, method, the flour and the melted butter, as a thickening agent and the base for any sort of sauce, any sort of white sauce or a cheese sauce, parsley sauce. I even use it to make a pepper sauce. It really works well in that. Maybe that could be the subject of a, another video on how to make a delicious pepper sauce. It's so sweet you wouldn't believe. No sugar in it at all, but just the natural sweetness of the butter and the peppercorns that you've crushed up in with the milk. It's unbelievable, but it's fantastically on a steak. Just going to turn that down a little bit because it's starting to smoke and you won't be able to see it on the camera. You don't need to use butter, you can use vegetable oil, just a little bit in the base of the pan just so that they don't stick and they cook nice. You can also use something like fry light for a one cow spray. This one's a uh, sunflower oil one but they do rapeseed versions as well. 
a lot healthier, but the butter is nice and it will help to caramelise and give a bit of colour to the base of these fish cakes. I'm just going to have a look and see how those are coming on. Right, they're just starting to catch, so we'll get those over. I'll turn the heat down a little bit. A bit more colour than I would have liked on there, but as I say, I'm still getting used to the... Still getting used to the induction hub. In fact, I'll add a little bit more oil in there. They don't burn too much. I'll turn the heat down. So on a medium heat, it'll probably take about three, four minutes aside. And despite that mixture being really gooey, if you do what I'm doing now and just bring the sides of the fish cake in as it cooks, just to get a better shape, they will hold their shape. They will firm up. Usually make, I make a bigger batch than this, I use a large tin of poachers and half the mixture I'll freeze and then just thaw it out and make the fish cakes uh, when I want it. Um, I haven't tried freezing them once cooked, I wouldn't suggest that, but um, they probably would last two to three days in the fridge. So they're coming on nicely. What we're going to do as well is just get that last half of lemon. Some of it we're going to use for garnish on the on the completed dish. So I'm just going to cut a wedge that we can clean up for the garnish. Put that to one side. And what's left? Once again, I'm just going to squeeze into the pan over the fish cakes. I'll create a bit of steam, but don't worry about that. It's all flavour that's going to make these taste lovely. I have a young colleague at work who asked me if I would do some recipes that use three ingredients or more. Well, here's an example of that. It's just potato, tin pilchers, some herbs and spices. Um, so a very quick meal to produce, and it's going to taste like, it's going to taste like no other fish cake you've tasted. Let's just see how these are coming on. Yep, they're almost there. They're not going to leave much more cooking at all. Yep, perfect. So I'm going to turn the heat down now, right down to its lowest. And I'm just going to put these over here for a minute. I'm going to put two on a plate that we're going to serve today with parsley sauce, and we're going to make that next. for the parsley sauce, we're going to wrap it up to temperature, and we're going to need some milk, and the butter again, so I think we need to get nice for a minute, and the parsley, and some seasoning. So let's put some some butter to melt in there. I'm just going to put 
doesn't need too much, just about that much. So it's almost just a tablespoon really. So you don't want to get this too hot, you just want to melt this gently. And then into that we're going to put a few teaspoons of flour just to make, it's, it's almost like a, a paste. Um, a bit, bit thicker than a paste. You'll see when I show it to camera. So very slowly melt it. I've turned this right down to a low heat now. You could also melt, melt the butter in the microwave if you wanted, no difference, it's just I'm going to make the sauce straight away on here, so. Right, so that's all melted now, so into that, first of all one teaspoon of flour, and then you need to mix it in, mix it thoroughly, get the butter coating all of the flour. You want to mix it well because you don't want any lumps in your sauce. So that needs a little bit more. I'll show you the consistency of it in a second when I've just got it mixed together. So you'll see, it's almost like an almond paste or peanut butter sort of consistency. Once that's all, all mixed in, you add your milk. Now I'm only making enough plastic sauce for this one batch of fish cakes I'm doing, so I don't need too much. That goes back on the heat. And what you do now with a whisk is continually stir that and don't stop. You want to Warm the milk up sufficiently that the roux melts into it, you've got no lumps, nice and smooth. And as it comes up to temperature it will start to thicken up. And that's what you're waiting for. It should all dissolve in, so you can't see the roux at all now, you'll see it's all in the milk. So we've got a thickening agent in there and there's no lumps. And what we're going to do as soon as we get a bit of heat there, which we'll leave it to do, just wipe this. Keep stirring, you'll see the milk start to smoke a little bit as it gets up to temperature and that's when you'll notice it start to thicken up. And as you can see we've got some milk steam coming off there so this is the ideal time to put the parsley in. So once again we're just going to roughly chop some parsley.
really must invest in a uh, herb chopper. Right, that's starting to thicken now. I can feel that coming. Yep, yeah, that's definitely thickening up a little. Still not quite there yet. We don't want to take it too far, we want to take it off the heat. Right, there it goes. It's on the turn, let's turn that down. Put in our parsley. Now a little bit of seasoning. see what it looks like. Still not quite there, just want a little bit more thickness to that, but it's coating the back of a spoon now. So we'll leave it on the heat let that continue. And it will thicken as it cools as well. And what you can do, if you put too much roux in and you find it's thickened up too much, Add a little bit more milk, thin it down, just warm it up before you serve it. And if you haven't got enough thickness and it's too runny, just put a spoonful or half a teaspoonful of corn flour in a mug. Add a little drop of uh, cold water to it and mix it until it absorbs it. And you'll find that will uh, thicken it up. So you can't go wrong really, you can always save your sauce. It's getting thicker now. A little bit longer. It's smelling lovely. People like their pasta sauce quite runny. I want one quite thick so it coats the fish cake, stays on it. It's just about there now. I don't know if you can see that. It is thickened up considerably. A little more wouldn't hurt. one side a minute. Remember the sauce that we kept from the tin of pilchards. I'm just going to warm that through gently because we're going to drizzle some of this over the over the parsley sauce. It's got so much flavour in it. It'll be a shame to waste it. This is optional if you don't like the fishy smell of the tomato sauce, leave it off. You won't be disappointed with just the parsley sauce on these, these fish cakes. Yeah, 
that's perfect. So let's turn that off. And now we can play up and taste test. So these are fish cakes. Here's our parsley sauce. Let's let you have a look at that. Some lashings of the parsley sauce, it really goes well with it. Put a little bit in front here. Sauce here. I'm we'll just going to place it through. And serve with a lemon wedge, and that's it. That is how we make cultured fish cakes. Very quick, very easy, with a lovely creamy parsley sauce and a little fishy tomato drizzle from the poultry juice and you're not going to be disappointed it really is lovely and that's my dinner tonight so I hope you liked the video um, if you did give it a thumbs up I don't mind a thumbs down if you didn't um, and if you want to know when I upload new content please click the subscribe button and the bell notification icon and you'll be notified and so till next time I'll see you then